Wake up, Murray. You got a job to do today. There's no time to rest at all. Especially with what you might be going through today, Mr. Murray. Greetings all, it's Blue Knight, and welcome back to slide 3, Honor Among Thieves. Previously, we started the first phase of jobs in China, taking care of two specific jobs that involved a little breaking in with our new gadget for Belly, the grapple cam. Also, we did get some photos taken for General Sao, so we were able to score a couple of jobs for his so-called wedding that's coming up. Today, we're going to take care of whatever this next job for Murray is about. Tearful Reunion. So let's head over to the waypoint very quickly and get this job underway. Actually, before I do that... Oh, I didn't get that other thing. I think it was the temporal lock that's now been... A, well, a lock for this, for this game, but I didn't get that yet. The mysterious signal I picked up was somewhere on the water's surface. I'm not seeing anything. Keep scanning. These readings are clear. Great snakes on a stick! I don't believe it! What? You found the signal? It's the team van! Last time I saw it, it was floating away on a block of ice in Canada! And now it's here! Highly probable, given ocean currents. I gotta go get it! Don't worry, baby! Mama's coming! Don't even think about swimming, Murray! That water's freezing! You wouldn't last a minute. But... But my baby! Hold your position. I should be able to drag the van to you using my RC chopper. Bless you, Penelope. Bless you and your bag of remote control gizmos. So in a really weird twist, and I guess in a little bit of continuity too, I must say, the team van from the first two games happens to make another appearance in the Sly Cooper series. It wasn't the last time that we got to see from Canada that would be like permanently gone. So now these are got a little sidetracked of sorts. That's a good thing Murray did say that because these missiles aren't going to be the biggest hazard to you throughout this. RC chopper part of the job. If you see any, I guess, flying knives coming your direction, it looks more like small missiles, if anything, in my opinion. Which is really funny to say because we have, well, actual missiles that are being deployed to us. So if you see any of the Tiger Guards throwing their projectiles at you, just get rid of them. They never come back, so it's really easy to take care of. Huh? Like I said, the real hazard is going to be those missiles you have to dodge out of the way. They do end up causing quite a bit of damage, so don't take them lightly. Alternate between taking care of the dodging with missiles and pulling that block of ice contained van. I'm pretty sure Murray would have loved to take that big truck we had back in Australia, it's Australia if he had the chance. That thing could crush a lot, a lot of things. To Murray's content, I would assume. <laughs> but we got the van, I think he appreciates that a lot more. Oh my sweet van! How I missed you! Don't worry, I'll break you out of your icy prison! Careful, Murray! The locals seem to be on to you! Just break the ice and take care of the guards that are coming your way. Simple as that. At least we'll get a little more cash now, so that's nothing to complain about. You can also see these packs of uh, barrels that are actually really explosive uh, and will cause a lot of damage if you're careless. It's no use, Murray. This area is too dangerous. We have to recover the van later. But I can't lose her again. Forget the van. You'll never make it. But no. No. Either help me, or get out of my way! I'm bringing her home! Okay, Murray. I've got a little fuel left. Keep pulling as hard as you can. I'll try to clear the way. This is a pretty stressful part of this next... Uh, of this job. You have to be really mindful uh, on... 
keeping Murray safe uh, because these enemies can surprise him without uh, without you knowing. So that's why I suggest you stick close to Murray as much as you can while he's pulling the van so you can clear the way of guards for him. So while we're at this, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, the Kulu Mountains in real life. They're actually landlocked, which means they're surrounded by land with no body of water that is connected to the mountains at all. So if this was actually taking complete inspiration from the real life version of these mountains, there would not be any bodies of water surrounding this level at all, which means there would be no chance that Murray could actually retrieve the van in any capacity. So this is a little bit of a suspension of disbelief thing that's been going down throughout the entire environment of this episode. But it is a good way to get the van back into the Sly Cooper series. I actually thought it would be completely gone after what happened in Canada from Band of Thieves. So this was a little bit of a surprise to me when I did play this job for the first time. It was also really, really difficult too from this point on, I must say. But at least not lying about that. It could take like four or five hits to kill Murray with turret fire. It is that powerful. And if you think this is gonna be stressful now, wait until you play the challenge that surrounds this part of Tearful Reunion. It is so, so aggravating at times, I swear. It's definitely one of the hardest challenges in this game from my point of view. So all we have to do is keep Murray safe again from guards, this time with the Panda King at his turret. And a really strange twist, his affinity with the van is Murray was able to touch the Panda King so much that he's actually helping him out here. Don't ask why, but I guess it's just one step closer to Sly himself, probably trusting the Panda King since he is helping out one of Sly's childhood friends. But it's a really, really stupid way of doing it, I must say. Then again, this is taking place in a world of anthropomorphic animals that can actually talk, so... Who am I to talk about realism here, as a fan of this series? I think... That depending on where you take out any of the spikes, it might activate as checkpoints. So we might have like the last checkpoint activated here. I might be wrong about that. If Murray does end up dying, you have to reset from the very top of the hill with him pulling the van. This is the hardest part of this turret part. Since there is no more protection for, from the guards with the, those spikes, since they're out of the way, you have to keep Murray safe at all costs. They will be surrounding him, are the enemies, relentlessly. So you have to be sure to keep the gunfire on the enemy and protect Murray. Of course, don't hit him at all, otherwise he will die and you will fail, have to restart all over again. <laughs> it especially sucks if the guards end up landing near close to Murray, because if they do end up recovering, then they will have a chance to hit him. Almost there. Come on, Murray, just a little more. Murray, you did it! You saved the van. Well done, Hippo. You've lit the flames in my soul. I feel awake for the first time in years. No! Thank you, Panda King. You can ride in my van anytime. You got shotgun for like a month. A great honor. I accept. I swear, those two are gonna have like the weirdest bromance ever. <laughs> Leon! 
operation is running smoothly. With access to General South database, and Sly successfully hired on as the wedding photographer, we are ready to make an attempt for Jing King. Given the complexity of Sal's downloaded data, I programmed my ThiefNet computer to automatically analyze the... What the... General Sal! He's... He's got my computer! Our whole plan is on that computer! How'd he find us? We're doomed! Bentley, calm down. I need you sharp. Listen up, team. This Sal character is more clever than any of us thought. As of this moment, we have one goal. Steal back the thief net computer. The time for subtlety is over. Bentley, break into the palace and ransack his personal computer. He might have linked it to ours. If so, that's where we'll start. The rest of the team will stand ready. No telling where this might take us. Sly's really proven to be a try and true leader. He actually took over the slideshow and quickly developed a plan for the entire game to get that laptop back. And since the laptop is gone, we can't buy any gadget from, gadgets from ThiefNet, so they're closed off on that shop for a little while. And now to actually get our laptop back, because it contains all of our information about what we're going to do with Sal, but now he's got us in his possession, things are looking really good. So we'll make our way over to this waypoint, because I remember this next job being a little lengthy. At the very least, I could get this out of the way in this episode, since we, since we do have a little bit of time left. Provided that these guards could actually let me through first, how rude of them. I just want to get to their temple, nothing else than that. Man, some people just have no manners, I swear. General Sao's computer has to be around here somewhere. No need to be sneaky. Let's just get the job done. You can break all the environment breakables in this area if you want. I'm not going to do that since the terminal is right over here. Pretty sneaky than to hide it in the corner like that. Okay, Sly, I found his personal computer. This should be easy. Standard OS security, no problem. You say that, Belly, as I end up ramming it to the barrier like that. I don't think it is that simple. At least with me at the controls. Sometimes I could be pretty, pretty doofy what I'm doing with gameplay. Security breach. You will be terminated. He's got a defense avatar. This could get ugly. Just run around and and not get pelted by gunfire like that. I think you should probably take out the standard or stationary avatars first because those aren't helping any matters any further. I was gonna say just go around and take out the shield and when you see an opening then you can shoot the defense avatar. Pretty much the same strategy that I've mentioned throughout the entire time we've discovered hacking throughout this game. There we go. Wait, there's two orbs here. Um, where's the other? I thought you only had just the one. Oh, right here. <laughs> I thought I got that one too for some reason. <laughs> um, whoops. At least we got it now. Aha! Uh -huh. I think I found something! His diary mentions a secret passage through the prayer bell. Then a walk across the heavens. You getting the sly? I'm en route to the bell right now. Better bring along the guru. This sounds like his department. <laughs> It says here to stand under the bell. I'll need to set off the transfer sequence from here. Got any ideas about that walk across the heavens thing? <laughs> That's amazing! Of course. If you need to ride on my back to keep the levitation going, be my guest. I'm not a big fan of falling to my death. Alright, I'll admit this part is really, really cool. 
the way that the guru is keeping his levitation going through the heavens like this, that's a that's a really awesome idea that they came up with. <laughs> Stuff like this doesn't happen that often with the guru since he's not really that much of a focus anymore ever since his time in Australia wrapped up with us. So it is really nice to see that his powers are still being used to show how strong he could really be when the Guru is actually needed to help out with the gang. So just act accordingly to whatever piece of the environment that the Guru picks up and just keep proceeding to the other side of this walk across the heavens thing wherever it might end up. Pretty hilarious how we're stepping onto the monkey's heads with a spire landing like that. That might be the most amusing part of this entire entire thing. I mean, look at me. <laughs> I'm spinning around this guy's head and he can't do anything about it. He's gonna have really messy hair by the end of this entire segment. <laughs> I'm not gonna pay for his haircut or anything. That's gonna be his own problem to take care of. Alright, we're not that far from finishing this. Just a few more steps. And we'll be on the other side. Just one last quick swirly on this guy's head. And we're done. <sighs> no problem. Take a rest if you need it. I'll push on ahead and look for Sal. Getting some weird readings up ahead. Wanna use your optimizer goggles? Famous Sly Cooper. It seems you and your little gang were able to follow the trail I left for you. Of course, you'll be helpless without them, as you'll soon discover. I'm not ashamed to rely on my friends. Who needs friends when you can have servants? Who needs affection when you can have obedience? Uh, why try to convince you when I can simply destroy you? This sacred forest has been the stage for hundreds of battles, as my ancestors crushed anyone who got in their way. And you will be no different. Bentley, are you hearing this? What's he talking about? I've heard of these types of battlegrounds before. The energy from all the fighting that has gone on before strengthens the combatants, allowing them to soar for long distances. You should be able to fly all the way across the arena with one jump. Plus, you can probably change directions in the air with your double jump. Enough chit-chat, Koopa. Face me now, and prepare for the end of your legacy. Switch directions in the air with your double jump. Okay, I have a little bit of a story with this first part of the fight. <laughs> I completely ignored Bentley's advice about switching directions in the air with this entire mega jump thing. I was a really, really dumb kid when I first played this fight. I have no idea why I avoided Bentley's advice about that, but I did, and it, it ended up making the fight so much harder for myself. So why, what I advise you do is that don't be dumb like me, first of all. I ignore Bentley's advice about switching, in the, uh, switching directions in the air. But don't go rushing into Sal's shield when you do try to make a play for him. Go, like, onto the side or... Or, uh... Or behind him if you can. And you might be able to get a hit on him. Oop. Oh, he got me there. I actually thought I was going to be fast enough at that time before he went on a, on a bamboo shoot. But I was able to do that the second time, thanks to some... Convenient responding. This part can be a little challenging with the challenge mode in this part of the fight. Since you are going in here with half health, you have to be extremely careful of what you do. With full health, you can be a little more lenient in your actions, but you probably don't want to do that like I am. Otherwise, you'll end up being stupid like me and just mistiming your shot. I forgot how many volleys he does with his black magic stuff. 
Oh, come on, move, move! Dino wasn't moving fast enough. <laughs> My controls were not responding fast enough in time, or I wasn't hitting the buttons fast enough. Either way, I ended up dying. I can't believe it! The Koopa family has been beaten by Pow! Our legacy is superior! I was a total scrub in that fight! I have never had that many mistimed shots like that before, and it's still going! What's going on now? I'm usually not this inaccurate with my... with my cane swings. That was really, really dumb. I can't believe I missed three times in a row like that, and I ended up dying because of it. Okay, so I might be a... I might be a little, uh... Overzealous of what I was doing before, but this time I'm gonna be careful. I'm sure of it. Oh my goodness, this guy just would not stop shooting fireballs at me. He just hopped on like seven bamboo shoots that would not would not relent. Of course, when I'm far away, he decides to actually make a play to go to the other side. Maybe that's a strategy. I, it's all about distance. That's probably it. But that can't be it. I've had times before where he has hopped on multiple bamboo points and still kept firing shots at me! Kinda like that. <laughs> it's so scary when he goes up close like that. You never know where he's gonna land. Got him. Nice. <laughs> Come back and take it like a man. Well done, esteemed wedding photographer. I'm impressed you lasted this long. Stop this, Sal. Release Gene King and this fight can end. No! Gene King is mine! Once our bloodlines cross, it shall be glorious! The Panda King in his day was magnificent. With the Tao name, a new generation of kings will be unstoppable. But she doesn't want to marry you. She's a woman. She doesn't know up from down. Once I convinced her father to take up meditation, she was ripe for the picking. I faced a lot of bad men in my time, but you, sir, are the worst. Oh, it gets worse, Koopa. Up until now, I've gone easy on you. But now, now you'll sample the ancient black arts of the family Tao! So I would say that this fight's not completely over yet, and the fact that he can't use magic. That's where it really comes in. It's now the ground combat portion of this boss fight. Also, I can't really believe they got away what Sal said about women. Like in a game like this? That was the last thing I expected to hear the first time I played this. That was really, really distasteful Sal. Unfortunately, this might come from a common belief back in the feudal China era that women were quote unquote ignorant creatures so this does stem from a place in history it's not like they completely made this up just to make Sal look like an evil very evil bad guy I will say this Sal is one of the more memorable villains to me in this game first because of this boss fight not because of that line alone this boss fight can be pretty tough if you're not being careful but second of all Sal is just a really strong villain in my opinion I'll get to more of my opinion about him a little later on in this let's play but he's one of the stronger opponents we end up facing throughout this series or at least, at least this game in my opinion so the best way to handle this fight is with push and spin attacks it's something i haven't used myself all that often throughout this game well to be honest that's kind of like the typical mindset i have for this game whatever i am going through a, a typical simple playthrough of this but push and spin attacks can be the most helpful, since he can block a lot of your shots with his shield. It's best to use those kind of maneuvers to get through his defenses like that. You will be able to damage him and push him back a lot more. After a while, he will summon those black hands coming to life from the ground. And if you knock down his health a little bit more, he will summon another attack that you have to be worried of as well. Not doing that yet. Back to the black hands. And there's that other attack, the black dragon. Depends on if he raises his shield or his hands will determine what kind of magic attack that he's using. And he's using that again. Oh, that 
dragon uh, did not go up a bamboo tree. Okay, that's kind of weird. That's not supposed to happen, but I'll take it. Uh oh. Ooh, I was able to stop him before he executed that attack. Awesome. That's gonna keep pushing the offensive on him. One time I was able to somehow get like a sneak attack slam on him, and that knocked out like half his health. It was really, really strange how I was able to do that. Because I was using the push and spin attack so often, I somehow triggered that to happen. Almost there. Just one more attack. There we go. First try on the ground part. You have won this battle. The war rages on. Take your foolish computer. It won't help you. Jinking is mine. Jinking is a person, not property. And sorry, pal, but we're ending this right now. <coughs> <coughs> Beware. Beware the power of Tao. Thankfully, we've managed to retrieve the LeapNet computer. However, all the plants stored inside are now compromised. The wedding is still on. Jin King remains Sal's prisoner. Yes, we are going to free her, but that's not enough. No, for this heist, we really need to put the screws to this guy. He's earned it. So, we're cleaning out his treasury as well. A feat impossible without Murray's van. Unfortunately, all that time in the ice has ruined its polycellular battery. I'll need Slice help to acquire a new one, which won't be easy, as the General's gone all out with security. He's even resorted to black magic dragons and hopping vampires patrolling the streets. We'll need to even the odds before the wedding. Slice, you and the Panda King will work to gather some fireworks and blow up the vampire's crypt. No crypt, no more vampires. This is the part where things get weird, in my opinion. <laughs> like, now we're how to deal with hopping vampires? I mean, the black dragons were one thing, but really, vampires? That's the last thing I expected to see. I don't know, this next piece of job just comes out really strange to me, for some reason. It's just like... It's not like what I would think of when... I got here the first time. It, things just took a really strange turn. Is there anything available that's new on ThiefNet? Uh, the Rage Bomb, I believe it's new. Ah, Raging Inferno Flop. I thought this would be available before, but I guess we have to wait till this point. Feral Pounds, that's another new one. Thief Reflexes, that's another new one. I think Spin Attack Level 3 might be another new one as well. I'm not too sure about that. And just Push Attack Level 2. I think we upgrade that. Push Attack Level 3 should be automatically available for us. In fact, I'm gonna get that, see if it is available now. Yep, it is. But we're seeing that a lot of this stuff is now entering the quadruple digit rage in terms of cash. So that's another reason why I don't go for the gadgets that much. A lot of them later on end up costing quite a bit of cash and like I said before, I don't use a lot of them a lot of the gadgets because I don't really think they're that useful for the most part. Sure, some of them can be handy, but I can get through the game just fine on just the smoke bomb and the necessary gadgets you need to complete certain jobs throughout the entire game. But that's just me. And I guess we'll end things off for today. We were able to retrieve our laptop and meet Sal face to face. Next time, we're gonna start this next phase of jobs and see if we can get things set before the wedding. Until we meet again, farewell for now.